This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. Hey, EMM. We are excited to announce that we are now accepting applications for our second annual Diversity and Inclusion Award. The award is eligible to fourth-year med students identifying as underrepresented in medicine and are applying to EM residencies. We are extending three $200 awards to selected individuals following a blinded review of all applications. Applications will be accepted through the end of November with winners being announced mid-December. Check out our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.org slash EDI dash award for all the details and to access the free application. Or you can click on the link in our show notes. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Good morning. Welcome to your Medical Minute. So I worked uh, over the weekend up in Leadville and we had a guy who was in alcohol withdrawal and alcoholic ketoacidosis. But he was a very difficult IV stick. And so up there, we don't have as many ultrasound trained people. He probably literally got 20 sticks to attempt to get a peripheral IV without success. So someone was pointing to their neck, right? Yep. So we went for an EJ next and we're able to get that without a problem. But some of the things that we did to increase our chances with the EJ are we put him in Trendelenburg, had him bear down, actually had somebody do kind of distal occlusion, and then we were able to get that in easily. But as I was thinking about that for a medical minute, I came across a very interesting article. It's small, and it's from 2007, but it's called Humming is as effective as Valsalva's maneuver and Trendelenburg position for ultrasonographic visualization. Uh, Anyway, the basic idea was they were looking at IV starts. Well, they weren't looking at IV starts. They were just looking at visualization in this study. But they took healthy volunteers, and then they had them just baseline, they had them in Trendelenburg, they had them do Valsalva, and then they had them hum, and they measured the diameter of the internal jugular, external jugular, and femoral veins. And how do you think the results were? They were outstanding, of course. So they found that with any of these maneuvers, your increase in uh, cross-sectional area of the vein was anywhere from 120 to 140%. Uh, Or I should say the size was 120 to 140%. That wasn't the increase. So you had a big jump in your visualization and probably your chances for success if you're starting an IV. I don't know about you, but whenever I try to explain a Valsalva to patients, like some of them get it, some of them don't. Sometimes we'll have them blow on a on a syringe, sometimes you tell them to bear down, and they don't, I don't know, they're just not that good at it. But everybody can hum, right? You can tell them to just hum along while Stephen is jabbing in their neck. So add that, yeah, add that to your list of tools of things that you can try to increase. And I would imagine that this may even work with peripheral veins as well. At least it'll keep the patient distracted and they'll have fun while you're starting their IV, right? We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.